Well, hello, good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live from Money News Up at Adesawe Kanda, also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and uh, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Coming up tonight, little to no rains in the northern part of Ghana stokes fears of a possible drought, getting the attention of President Kufuado, who has now announced his government will outline measures to deal with the situation seven years after one village one dam promise we have a conversation on this matter tonight stay with us it bothers also on matters of food security this tonight what new ideas are the presidential candidates of the various political parties putting forward to deal with the menace of illegal mining we have a conversation on Galamse for you, especially with focus on what is happening in the Konongo Kumasi area. Stay with us. We'll have a conversation tonight. And government officials and members of the opposition mass on the country congress stuck in a blame game over allegations of sale of state lands. Tonight, the minority is hitting back at government will tell you exactly what their position on the full story is. So always, we are your election command center. Bring your constituency watch. Our focus is on the Okaikwe North constituency tonight here. An integral part of the show. As always, we'll hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana tonight on Facebook and on X. Let's get talking. Well, there are so many ways you can connect with us here on Ghana today, and that includes what is going to be on your screen right now. Yes, this QR code. Scan the QR code using your smartphone to get instant access to the latest in news, videos, and more, including the link of Ghana tonight, so you can share it with the rest of the world. Let's settle for Ghana Breeze. Sponsors of the anti-LGBTQ bill are expected to protest against the Chief Justice on September 17 over the indefinite adjournment of the case. According to the lead sponsor, Samuel Nat George, the Chief Justice has become an impediment in the justice delivery of the case by putting Article 106 on hold. The group said a petition will be submitted to demand a timetable for hearing and completion of the case. The Family Values March is a march not targeted at the President but at the Chief Justice. The Chief Justice is becoming an impediment to the justice delivery system in this particular case. We are going to pet petition the Chief Justice to give us a timeline for the completion of the case. There was a ruling that was supposed to be given on the 17th of July. She came and unilaterally decided to stay that ruling. She cannot impose an injunction on Parliament so moto. It is an abuse of her powers under Article 296 of the Constitution. She's acting arbitrarily, she's acting capriciously and maliciously. And we will take her on for that and hold her to account for that. The Peace Council has expressed concerns over what it says is a trend of political parties failing to use its laid down structures to raise concerns but always accusing the council of inactivity. This is its reaction to the NDC's public declaration that it will not sign a peace pact ahead of this year's polls. They themselves agreed that they will police their, their own people, what they say, how they say it and all of those things. While they are in a meeting, the other people will call us and ask, what is the Peace Council saying? You are a member of that committee. What do you expect from us again? It's difficult to see all these things going on consistently. This council is being blamed left and right. When we are all in the meeting, let your representatives who come to those meetings go back and report what was it that we discussed. What did we agree on? What are the things that you sign up to? NPP running mate Dr. Masio Pokoprempe has entreated residents of Ashanti region to support the NPP leader. Speaking to party supporters, he also called on party faithful to throw the weight behind the aspiring MP, Nane J. Bafo Ewa. What 
I'm on my knees appealing to you that the way you supported me, do same for my successor and all other MPP parliamentary candidates. We are only going to vote for the elephant, no one else. Running mate of the NDC flag bearer, Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajaman, says the Women Development Bank being proposed by the party will be a game changer for most women and their families. At a data to some markets in Accra, she asked traders to vote for the NDC in the December elections for development and prosperity. <laughs> We can't afford to go for loans at the big banks anymore because they will demand for papers of properties which might not even belong to us. Debt owed independent power producers have been renegotiated between the finance ministry and the IPP. That's according to the Minister of State in charge of the Energy Ministry, Herbert Krapper. According to him, the debts have been divided into current debts, which are being handled by the ECG, while legacy debts are being handled by the finance ministry. ECG, uh, through the Ministry of Finance, has gone through a renegotiation process with the IPPs. Some of the debt has been referenced as legacy debt. And then going forward uh, from June 2023, uh, current debts are being dealt with by, tackled by ECG, out of which 60% is current and 40% has been deferred. And so in terms of the, the legacy debt, the Minister for Finance is attending to that. And in terms of the, the current ones, ECG is current. As one is on 3news.com, make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, let's take a look at this. We continue with our campaign uh, on and against illegal mining here on your election command centre. It is a big issue going into this election and it's following recent activities of illegal mining in Konongo. We shall also hear how the presidential candidates intend to deal with this menace that we've been talking about for quite a while now going forward and, and, and this discovery. And we broke it right here on Ghana tonight, three nights ago, that discovery of illegal mining in the Konongo Township in the Ashanti region. First reported here on Ghana Tonight has reignited a campaign against Galamse and the conversation about the state of illegal mining in this country. Questions being asked if government's fight against illegal mining has been a fiasco or indeed there is something going on that we're not seeing all this while. For what you're seeing on the screen are videos that we, together with our Ashanti Regional Correspondent Ibrahim Abubakar, captured yesterday, yesterday afternoon. These with videos were captured with these earth moving equipment talking about excavators busily just destroying what has now been discovered as a wetland. This area where this illegal mining is going on is said to be a wetland around the Accra Konongo Highway. And apparently, According to the authorities, they were initially told that there was some desilting. Desilting exercise was supposed to be taking place. And now, how can the desilting exercise now be transformed into illegal mining? And we counted as many as six excavators on this wetland, busily digging the ground and destroying these wetlands as we're seeing right now. But let's know what you think. And we put up a question on, on social media. And it's right now on our Facebook and X pages. We're asking exactly what your view is when it comes to the fight against illegal mining and 
did whether we are doing government has really made, made an impact at all what do you see and what we've been showing you from Konongo in the Ashanti region is that level of devastation in fact the impunity that these persons involved in this illegal mining are going about their duties is what raises questions and this is not deep in the forest this is just by the roadside not not too far away from the Accra Konongo highway when you're driving on that highway you, you you stretch your neck a bit, you would see it. And it, this, we understand, has been going on for months, at least over a month now. And the Environmental Protection Agency has indeed confirmed this illegal activity. But then again, there are a lot more to say. I wanted to take a look. We, we spoke to the EPA, in, in this, uh, the EPA officer in this Congo area about whether they have seen this, this activity which did not start happening just yesterday or two days ago. The level of devastation you see has been going on for quite a while. Take a look. Uh, what we can relate to it was a recent letter that we got from the municipal assembly that they wanted to undertake dredging. Uh, so when we got, we got, it's only this week that we got information about the mining activities that is taking place there. From what we are gathering, it's not the dredging exercise that we were informed. So we need to go there and then we inform the appropriate quarters. But for now, there's no diocese company to undertake any mining activity in that area. So whatever is taking place there, if it is not a dredging exercise, then it is illegal. So if it's not a dredging exercise, because the EPA says they were told there was going to be a dredging exercise there. Clearly, what you saw on the screen cannot be dredging. That's illegal mining. Now, can the EPA also be excused for feigning some ignorance about what's happening there? Because if you're told that it was uh, supposed to be uh, a dredging exercise, and so you go to sleep for over a month, we understand. That place, as you see there, this level of destruction did not take place within a week. Does this look like dredging? Well, apparently the people have been complaining, the residents, because what is going on is closer to some residential facilities, including a church. That's what some of the residents in Konongo had to say to us. The first thing I want to inquire, is there even a war against illegal mining? There is no war. You've been hearing on the news that there is a war. I'm telling you there is no war because when you come to where they are mining, those in authority are those involved. There is no war against illegal mining. Now I have to think of putting charcoal in to make my water clearer. Ghana has a perifonia. Now I do remember what I was going for you, but sorry. I have a demonstration that I have to do with you. And perifonia was going to be in the movie. Perifonia was... Asante Atem Centre, ha, any mubi, any omoye, IGP, any omampeni, akufuado. So omwa ma, ame stopu omwa ma yenzu yenzu papa omwa, asamba badabi. The man you heard ending these residents talking to us is the pastor of the New Life Church, Richard Opombuating. The foundations of his church are threatened as a result of this illegality going on there in the name of dredging, according to the EPA. And we, we can all see this. We, we, we cannot continue to play the ostrich about a situation like this, especially because this is very evident in the open space. And people who have just driven by this Accra Konongo Highway have attested to what we've been talking about. The Lands and Natural Resources Minister, Samuel Abujina, post verdict on the fight against illegal mining is different. He says that government is indeed making inroads in the fight against illegal mining and actually implementing the laws to fight illegal mining. He said this at a press conference, a Meet the Press series organized by the Information Ministry yesterday. Government is trying to enforce the rules, enforce the law for the you know, larger good of the country. Because when you enforce the rules and you sanitize the mining industry, the small-scale mining industry, the beneficiaries of that kind of intervention 
is all of Ghana, including the illegal miners themselves. So that's the minister. Talk about government is implementing the laws to fight illegal mining. What we saw in Konongo, that land where this illegal mining is taking place, we understand it's a wetland. If you check the Minerals and Mining Act 2016, you cannot do that activity or undertake that activity on a wetland. What we are seeing there. So for these excavators to have been destroying this wetland for over a month and people are driving by, nothing happens to them except when the media starts talking about it. We understand today the excavators are being moved from the site. These excavators have started moving. And, and we want to say that we, we're winning this fight. That's the evidence. And let's bring in the member of parliament for the Tamale North constituency. He is a deputy ranking on the Lands and Forestry Committee of Parliament, Al Hajia Al Hassan Suhini. Appreciate your time. Good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Thank you, Alfred, for having me. Good evening to you and good evening to our viewers. I must sincerely apologize for my hoarse voice, though I am under the weather a little. Thank you for having me. It's, it's fine, and we can hear you clearly, um, thankfully. But have you seen this level of destruction in Konongo, along the Konongo Accra Highway, not too far away from the highway, as a matter of fact? Alfred, when I saw it, I could not believe my eyes. The impunity, the impunity, I mean, the total breakdown of law and order and the sheer destruction in the full glare of everybody, it tells you how this government announced fight against this galamsey has always been a sham. I said, I cannot believe, I couldn't believe my eyes. You have the mining to almost the edge of the road, not almost the edge of the road, in fact, at the edge of the main road, Konomi Kumasi Road. And the information is that the Mineral Commission District Officer, because it's a mining community, they actually have a Minerals Commission engineer, you know, in that district claims that when he first noticed this and declared it as an illegal activity, he informed the district assembly. The district chief executive, I said, I am shocked. It's still a post even as we speak this evening. What is the president, His Excellency, the commander-in-chief of the Ghana Forces doing? Hasn't this come to his attention? What responsibility is being demonstrated by the people that he has put in charge of these districts? How come the district chief executive is still at post 24 hours after this came to light? The president and the government must be ashamed. There have been several instances of embarrassment as far as this, you know, menace is concerned. Many instances and many reasons why this government should be embarrassed. But this takes the ice. I mean, this, this takes the ace, I mean. This puts the icing on the cake. I I see. It's unconscionable. And the destruction, the pollution of the water bodies nearby. In fact, and they even had to use road you know, uh, uh, cats to ensure that it does not even get onto the, you know, um, um, card road. Unbelievable. But you see, Unbelievable. even before you know, we escalate this matter and, and, and also call for some level of accountability from central government, how about those at that lower level, the district level, the municipal assembly, the, the constituency, 
the region for that matter. We have, a, we have an EPA officer there. We have a Minerals Commission officer there. We have the DCE, as you mentioned there. And this had been going on for four weeks before we talked about it three days ago. So how about that? How about those people as well? That is why I started by asking the question, why the DCE or the MCE for Konongo is still at post hours and days after this has come to light, assuming the president didn't know about it, assuming those in Accra, the minister, didn't know about this, you cannot tell me that for the last couple of days that this has been in the news, it has not come to their attention. And for no you know, remedial action to be taken all this while, you cannot convince me that this entire government machinery is not complicit in this, you know, dastardly, you know, conduct and behavior. I, I do not think that anybody, anybody who is just a common citizen or foreigner can be this brazen. I believe that the people involved in this have some level of you know, uh, 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 audacity to do this because they feel or believe that they have the powers that be, you know, in support of this act. Otherwise, I cannot imagine for the life of me why anybody would be that bold to mine that close to such a major highway, putting the road under threat and also polluting water bodies you know, around the area and destroying the vegetative cover of the area. And the Minerals Commission officer, the excuse he gives is that he detected and, you know, classified it as an illegal conduct and reported to the DCA. Well, he can be forgiven because he does not control the coercive state, I mean, power of state. And so he cannot, for example, move a military or a police detachment to that area. But for the municipal chief executive officer to know that this has been going on for days and to have done nothing about it, and the minister responsible for mining, and His Excellency the President, in whom our natural restore resources are vested to ensure responsible protection, to all look on days after this has come to light only leads to one conclusion, and that this government is simply, they have simply lost their plot, and I believe they are complicit. I, I think they sanction this, and I think well, that they do not have the well, moral is this, is this an issue that the committee, your committee, your committee, your committee is going to take interest in? I know Parliament is, is still on recess, but you're coming back uh, in no time. Is this a matter that you as a committee would want to take up beyond what the media is doing because we can only shine the light Absolutely. on this illegality. Absolutely. I have been on the phone uh, all day trying to get as much information as possible on this matter. I have reached out to the Minerals Commission. And in the coming days, you will hear, if not the entire committee, what the minority side of the committee will do about this. It is unconscionable. It's unthinkable. It is a sign of the total breakdown of law and order. And I think that, you know, it, 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 I cannot even find the appropriate words to describe this, you know, brazen impunity that well. these miners are engaging. It simply tells you that they do not respect the authority of state because they have corrupted it or they have compromised it and they know that this act will attract no sanction whatsoever from the people who are in charge well. of the state. Unfortunately. And it's one issue that we're going to keep tabs on with your committee, but I appreciate Absolutely. your time indeed, and it's one we'll look out for it. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Anubal Hassan Soheni is a member of parliament for the Tamale North constituency. He's the deputy ranking on the Land and Forestry Committee of this 8th Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. And he's made a promise here on Ghana tonight that the committee is going to look into this matter. We'll keep tabs on this statement he has made try to get some answers as well and, and what has to be done going forward. But this matter of illegal mining, 
is, is an environmental, social, political issue. And for the politics of it, a number of the presidential candidates have been talking about how they intend to deal with this menace beyond what President Kofuado has said. Take a look at this. Dr. Mahmoud Obamia, the flag bearer of the MPP, says this. He says, quote, let me put it on the screen right now, that first up, the re there's therefore a compelling reason more than ever to ensure that we nip the menace of Galamse in the bud to ensure responsible mining and safeguard our environment and water bodies. That's all, Dr. Mahmoud. But this was exactly a week ago. He made this statement on his campaign tour. Let's hear from Alan Kojo Chamantin's movement for change. And this is what Alan Kojo Chamantin says he's going to do when it comes to the fight against illegal mining. Take a look. The GTP makes proposals on how to deal with Galamsey. It's very clear. You cannot wish away Galamsey. Because if you go to the Galamsey mining areas, many of the young people are involved in Galamsey. They are involved in Galamsey just like when you go to a farming community, others are farming. What is Galamsey? Galamsey is illegal mining. If you legalize it, it is no longer Galamsey. But the business model that GT, the GTP is proposing is that these young uh, men and women, they are already on the ground. They are not going to leave those sites now or in the future. So what the GTP is proposing is that we group these young people into corporate entities, not cooperatives, into well-structured corporate entities. Government provides seed funding for them to acquire the right equipment, modern equipment, provides working capital, not for free, but concessionary loans without collateral. For these young people, these young people are going to be the owners of those companies. Well, let's hear from John Mahama, who's a flag bearer of the NDC as well, who's been talking about how to deal with illegal mining. The aggressive approach adopted in recent times has proved unsustainable. That is using Galam Stop and military uh, uh, people to police Galam C. This has only helped worsen the fight against Galam C and led to a situation where some political actors and their task force teams have profited from the arrangement. So we will structurally reform the entire mining sector through a comprehensive recategorization into small-scale mining, medium-scale mining, and large-scale mining. So there will be three categories of mining activity, and each will have specifically tailored operational, environmental, and safety requirements that they have to follow. We will introduce and encourage technological in innovation to improve capacity for coordinated monitoring of the small-scale and medium-scale mining sectors in order to reduce the environmental impact. This will include using AI to locate all small-scale mining and Galamse operations to be able to track excavators and geofence all concessions to ensure mining operations are not conducted in unapproved areas, especially in water bodies. When we talk about geofencing, there is a technology. Well, so that's John Mahama there. And in fact, this, all of these happenings leads to what we're going to be doing in the coming days uh, here on TV3 and across our media journal platform, the big conversation on illegal mining and all these proposals which have been put forward to fight this menace, the employment of AI, drones, and so on. For the likes of the eco-conscious citizens and Arocha Ghana, Wolasewa, and Daroboso's team, they say that even the large-scale companies, mining companies, are, are alleged to have been involved in some form of illegal mining, right? But this is what a number of you have been saying. We put up a question on, on social media. And if you, if you go on our X page on 3 News G8 on TV3 Ghana, you're going to see it. The question that we ask is, rate government's fight against illegal mining. Because, you see, governance is about you and I. And we are directly impacted by this menace of Galamsey. We ask the question, outstanding, more room for improvement, abysmal. 94% of those of you who voted on the 3 News G8 X page say abysmal this fight of government against illegal mining. And 6% of you say there's more room for improvement. 
1,146 of you voted on the TV3 Ghana X page, rate government fight against illegal mining. 87% of the 1,146 votes said abysmal. 11% more room for improvement. 2% of you say outstanding. And then if you go on our WhatsApp channel, 3 News GH, we had 510 of you saying the fight against the government fight against illegal mining, abysmal. And 33 of you say there's more room for improvement. 10 of you say it's outstanding. Well, so that's the verdict of the people. So the verdict and the voice of the people, you see it right there. And that's why this is a collective. We cannot sit back and see things go this way while we are all affected by the polluted waters as a result of illegal mining. We should be interested in all of it. So stay with us here on TV3 and across all media general platform. Coming up next, government to announce mergers to deal with the impact of the drought in the northern part of the country in the coming days. But what has become of the village? That's a one village, one dam policy and that of the Palogo Multipurpose Dam. Right? These were measures that were to be put in place to address all of these issues we're talking about. Today, President Kofado has said that government will, in the coming days, announce measures to deal with what he says is the impact of the dry season on farm outputs. The president made the observation when he went to Bogatanga earlier in the Upper East Region to commission the rehabilitated Upper East Regional Hospital. Now, the president posted on his X page, and I'm going to show you that in a bit, but what you're seeing on the screen right now are farmlands with crops that are dried up, some almost dried up as a result of the low rainfall pattern that we've seen at least in that part of the northern region or the northern part of the country. Now, and the, the attendant effect of what we're seeing is the impact on food production. And already we're, we're grappling with the price of some food items on the market going high. So this is what the president said. In fact, he posted on his X page. He says, as I am in the region, quote, it is important that I comment on a matter of considerable importance to the people of the northern regions of our country. I am aware of the impact that the dry season has had on farm outputs. I want to ensure, assure you that government in the next few days will announce mergers to address the situation. That's President Kofuado on his X page, that he is aware of what's happening, the impact of the dry season on farm outputs. But the issue is not just about the impact of this dry season. In fact, there's been little rain as well as crops in many parts of the north in the beginning to wither. Now, this is how some farmlands look in some parts of the Upper, upper East region specifically and the northern region. Take a look at this. And, and, and that's the evidence of the state of affairs with regards to farmlands in this part of the country, and it's not looking good. So we asked the question, what exactly is going on with respect to this one village, one dam promise, which was supposed to augment this low rainfall pattern in these parts of the country? We'll tell you what the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority CEO has been saying about the one village, one dam. But before that, Castro Senyala is our Upper East Regional Correspondent who has been on the ground and been to a number of these farms, which we're showing you on the screen right now. He's joining us on Zoom. Castro, appreciate you here on Ghana tonight. That's, that's quite troubling, at least. If I look at the, the farmlands and the crops that we're, we're showing on the screen, tell me about it. What, what's going on beyond what we're seeing on the screen right now? Alfred, the issue of uh, the lack of rain, especially in this part of the country, is of great worry to many, particularly farmers who want the rainfall to be able to go about their farming activities. Uh, it is not entirely, uh, it's not, the, the problem is not the entire part of the northern region, uh, part of the northern part of the country, as some places um, witness rainfalls. Um, but then the bigger portion of um, here is facing the problem. 
talk about Northeast region, talk about Upper West, talk about some portions of Upper East region. In fact, uh, there was a recent rain on uh, Monday, the 13th of August this year, and that was the second rain, actually, in some places after it had come almost a month ago. That was somewhere in July uh, uh, 2024. And so, Alfred, it's really a serious issue. Uh, farmers are really concerned. I've been speaking on phone to farmers in the Tantala uh, area, which is in the Maguru district of the Northeast region, and also touched base with some farmers in the Fumisi Valley who are complaining bitterly, saying that the issue is really affecting them. And the interesting thing is that where uh, this rain is needed for agricultural activities, for instance, in the Fumbisi Valleys, where vast lands of uh, farms are, I mean, is be, are being transformed to, I mean, produce, I mean, we're trying to produce rice. The rain this year is, interestingly, not falling there, but falling in areas where uh, there's little to no, not much agri agricultural activities happening there. And so the question still remains, like you just asked, what is causing this rain? Uh, for some, I mean, experts who I try to sample uh, the views, they believe that there, uh, there's this now, the, the, what we're facing right now is now the right time for us to begin the conversations and, in fact, resolve the conversation on climate change and how its effects can be very, very bad. And, and that cannot get any worse than what we're seeing. And, and Castro, stay with me. Let me bring in uh, Bismarck Adongo Ayurogo, who is the executive director um, of uh, one of the NGOs, in fact, a group that has been monitoring this 1D1F, that's One Village, One Dam initiative. That's the executive director of the Northern Patriots Research and Advocacy. That's the group that has been following the implementation of this One Village, One Dam. He's joining us on Zoom as well for a conversation on this matter. But before we hear from him, uh, Richard Opongwating is the executive director of the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority. He appeared before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament and sure. he was asked a specific question about the state of affairs of the One Village, One Dam initiative and how many villages have benefited from this initiative or promise by government. Take a look. We're in charge of One Village, One Dam. Um, Honorable Chair, we are not in charge, but we give technical support to them. Mm. But we were not in charge of the actual administration of the so, so how many villages got down? Oh, close to about 574. Where? Uh, which, uh, um, I can provide the Are house. they dams or dugouts? Yes, some of them are dams, some are dugouts. Okay. Because they, they vary, depending on the site. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there are dugouts, dugout. 570 dugouts. Yeah. Uh, let me do the clarification. Um, a dam is just a structure that stores water. Yes. If it's a dugout, it means that you have to dig below the ground level before you can create the storage. Okay. But it's also a dam. Okay. I would say it's a small dam. Okay. And the big dam is the one that you build above the surface mm. of the earth. That is what we call the big dam. Okay. So dugouts, whether dugout or dam, they are all dam. Well, so that's uh, Richard Opon Uh He has the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority. And I want to bring in here one of our guests who has been monitoring this as well on, on this. And that end point uh, that Richard Opon ended with, uh, uh, Mr. Bismarck, I don't go, I, I don't go, thank you for joining us here on, on Ghana tonight. Can any dugout be described as a dam in us? in the words of Richard Opombwating? Uh, thank you very much and good evening to your viewers. Um, I, as a civil society person, working with communities in Northern Ghana and keenly monitoring government policy on one village, one dam, that were told was to ensure that we had water for all year round farming, to increase agricultural productivity, improve food security, create jobs, and improve the quality of lives of the people of Northern Ghana. It's what I am more concerned, rather than the technicalities of what constitutes a dam and what constitutes a dam. We leave the technicalities to experts like Ghana Irrigation Development Authority. But for us, what is important is, have these dams 
that we're told were to provide sufficient water for all year round farming. Are they serving their purpose? And, and I want you to answer that, that question respectfully. Are, are they serving the purpose for which we're told? And, and are they really having the, the water in there to augment the situation that we're faced with? That is it. So they are not serving the purpose. We, in our monitoring, realized that government had constructed 570 of them. And when we went around, then went around all the communities in northern Ghana. None of the dams in the dry season had water for dry season farming. Almost all of them were completely dried. It is only in the rainy season that when you visit most of them, you are likely to see packets of water in them. But in the dry season, that we need this water badly to be able to continue our agricultural activities, the water is dried up. And what is worrying is that dams before this government's dams, small dams, small earth dams in northern Ghana, before the era of President Nanado and Baumea government, there is enough evidence to suggest that they have contributed in significant proportions to reducing poverty in this part of the country. So it is quite worrying and quite unthinkable that these dams provided by this government using Ghana's precious oil money, they have provided them and by November, December, all are dried up, and the farmers are unable to use them for the purpose for which these dams were constructed. So the dams are not containing the water. It is only the rainy season that they contain the water. And if these dams were really functional, if these dams were really having the water, right. that we all thought they were going to carry for agricultural activities, we have just been using them to water some of the crops or our crops that are dried as a result of little or no rain in most parts of northern Ghana uh, in this era. Hmm. So it is a serious matter here, and I'm happy the president has uh, noted it. What we are not sure he can do differently is what he's saying measures will be taken. The government has properly diagnose the problem that this part of the country has, has this challenge almost yes has this challenge almost every uh, uh, nine months of no rain and only three or sometimes four months of erratic rainfall so government have diagnosed the problem rightly and right. said look we're going to build irrigation infrastructure just as we have seen some downs in the past providing water for all year round farm. Yeah. So most of us welcome the idea. Most of us applauded the government for this noble object policy objective. But the implementation as implementation, how can you use Ghana's oil money? Eh? The annual budget funding amount over three hundred million Ghana cities. To cook. Hmm. With uh, an average of six hundred and seventy thousand constructing dams that do not have water. That is why in our report, we titled our report, Ghana's oil money on dry dams. We have sunk a lot of our oil money there into these so that dry dams. Have... And in, in fact, because you talk about your monitoring and the evidence you've seen on the ground, my colleague Dennis Barberi Wadam is joining me as well to, to just put some more flesh to what, what you have just said to us. And, and Dennis, we, we, we have some, some videos of what's happening on the ground is it not yes we do have some videos on the ground i mean mm. for some of the dams they are beginning to collect some water now but we have done this on manifesto check earlier before and that's right we didn't see any water in any of the dams in the height of the dry season mm. but that's just to say that i mean the promise that was made in 2020 mm -hmm. 
to the effect that these dams were going to be constructed because they needed to use them for all year round farming. Mm -hmm. That could not have been possible because at certain points in time, you do not find even an iot a drop of water in any of the dams. But these concerns are well grounded because they stem from what the government itself had promised and what they had said. So when you look at the 2020 manifesto, where they made a promise to, to construct the, the dams, one of the key things that they said was access to water all year round. Mm -hmm. Now, this was not the only policy that was supposed to have that particular um, effect on the people. There was also another promise to the effect that they were going to construct the polygon or to purpose dam. Now, part of the, the aims of this particular project was to the effect that it was going to aid in irrigation. Irrigation, we all understand, is for the purposes of all year farming. That's right. So many are now asking the question, if these projects were announced, one village, one dump, the construction of Polgo multipurpose dump to address this particular issue. And we understand $12 million has been spent already. spent already, but we show you Bearland the last time. Mm. So now the question is, what kind of measures is the president coming to announce again? After all these were done four years ago to the effect that we're going to address a certain challenge that had been identified in this part of the country. So the concerns well grounded, but of course, it does appear that the president accidentally was in town to commission the rehabilitated Upper East Regional Hospital. Then he saw for himself how the plants were looking, some mm. withering away and all that. And then he made this particular uh, tweet, I mean, on, post on, on X. So yes, these are concerns that are well within um, the context of what the government itself had promised to address a certain challenge. These are no concerns which are out of context. And, and Mr. Ayurgo, quickly, you say that uh, these dams, for most part of the dry season, do not have water in it, in them. The, the period when they are supposed to serve the purpose for which we spent the money on, that period, you know, they don't have water in there. We have, we have, in partnership with Africa Center for Energy Policy, go around the five regions in northern Ghana where these dams were constructed, and that. We have gone there, they have no water in the dry season. And we had even petitioned Parliament that the money that have been approving um, for government to construct these dams, they themselves, they should go beyond sitting in that chamber and approving resources for the executive to uh, consume. They should go to the field and see the money that they'll be approving for the government, what is on the ground. There are people are not benefiting. Mm. We, the farmers, we are not benefiting. The dams are dry. Right. Meanwhile, it is historically established with empirical evidence that small dams contain water. Why is it that in the case of this government, small dams don't, get, don't have water in the northern part of the country? And that's a quick question that indeed uh, leaves a lot more answers. So I don't go, I don't go, Executive Director of the Northern Patriots Research and Advocacy. Uh, thank you so much for this. And, and, and Dennis, you're showing me, a, 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 this is supposed to be a dam? Yes, so these are some of the dams that, um, this was as of March this year where we had our cameras on some of the dams. So as I was saying, this you can virtually see that they were dried up. And that is the concern Which that is raising. This is somewhere in the Upper East region. Because right. these are community-based community dams, there are mm -hmm. actually a lot of them. He mentioned over 500, and that was confirmed by the Irrigation Development CEO as well. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, this is just a typical example of how, in fact, this was even one of the dams that had little water in them. Some of them were virtually dried up completely. That's evidence-based analysis. From, from Dennis there. Appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, uh, and the, the questions we're still asking and trying to get some answers to this. Uh, thank you so much, Dennis Poberi. I mean, stay with us here on Ghana tonight. Coming up next, the minority is hitting back at uh, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources over state land sale and allegations. We'll hear from the Member of Parliament for the North Tongue Constituency, Samuel Kujetu Ablakwa, after this quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The minority in parliament has accused the Ecuador government of failing to publish a comprehensive list of public lands in the country, allegedly due to fears of exposing the misappropriation of these assets. Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abdelai Jinapoy, if you recall, yesterday I announced at a press briefing uh, that the government is working on compiling and publishing the list of public lands to promote transparency and accountability. In fact, laid this whole issue of state of sale of state lands at the doorstep of the ex Muhammad administration. Take a look. We put out 
on the basis that these are evidence of state capture, that the government of President Akufuado was engaged in state capture. And why, 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 we, why did they come to the conclusion that the, the Akufuado government was engaged in state capture? Because they sold land A, they sold land B, they sold land C. And I said to you that for me, when the, those allegations are made, my first port of call is the last commission. And my first request is that I want the facts, I want the data. The data has been assembled, the facts have been put out. It turns out that it's not a good government that sold those lands. I don't, I don't understand part of land here. That's why I've been restricting myself for years. And you all know who was president in those years. We all know who was president in 2015 and 2016. The lands were sold in 2015 and 2016. So it was a specific allegation, and I'm giving specific responses. If somebody makes another allegation who turns out that those lands were sold under President Akufuado, I will say so and say why. And then the Ghanaian people will make their own judgment. I want to conclude by repeating specific allegations were made. Parks and gardens land were sold, judiciary land had been sold. Well, that's the Lands Minister, but addressing journalists earlier today, Member of Parliament for the North Town Constituency, Samuel Okujato Ablakwa, strongly hit back and criticizing government's delay in disclosing the status of these state lands or public lands that have been sold. Take a look. The committee, which I chair, took a strong view of this situation and invited the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. He once again failed to produce the list and was making excuses that it is such an onerous task, they are still compiling the data and the uh, Lands Commission is struggling and we should give them time. What is happening in this country? We have come to the firm conclusion and a very informed one that the Akufuado Baumia government is deliberately refusing to disclose the status of all public lands in our country because they are complicit, because they know that when the full facts emerge, they will be exposed for the massive land grab, the unconscionable state capture that they have engaged in. So we condemn government's inability for more than two years since parliament demanded a compilation, a disclosure, the full data of all public lands. It is totally unacceptable. And it shows that the lands ministry, the lands commission, they have derelicted. They are not properly carrying out their constitutional mandate but even worse, they are clearly complicit. Well, the Assurances Committee that Samuel Okuyoto Blakwa chairs has given the Lands Minister the next four months to provide full details of the public lands that have been sold, who sold them, who bought them, or who were they, they sold to, so that we'll all get to know exactly who are the people who are buying state lands and under what circumstance, really. But I want to say thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. On behalf of the rest of the team, we do appreciate your company. My name is Alfred Okansi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.